Sumit, uh, basically, as Prema said, uh, I have been working in SM Netsup Technologies from last almost more than 15 years. And uh, I am, you know, working as a, currently I'm as working as a program manager here. So I oversee many projects and, you know, and we also have been in a partnership with uh, Pre-Practical on our uh, requirement of resources, especially on the uh, technology like, you know, uh, ReactJS, you know, Node.js, Mern and Mean technologies actually. And also kind of, you know, we also have requirements like, you know, .NET and in database, MSBI and BI technologies. So those also kind of, we are kind of, you know, we kind of, you know, you know, uh, talk to, you know, people if they can manage resources on that field as well. So having said that, we'll, I'll just, we have a slide deck that I'll just share here now. So first, a few point, a few slides as our HR managers what we'll talk about it. And I'll talk about each of the slides of it, okay? <laughs> Very good afternoon to everybody here in, the, in this uh, room. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Prema for the, giving us such a wonderful opportunity to interact with you all. So thank you for your valuable time, which we are, you know, we wanted to give you a very brief about uh, what is next, uh, what, what are the technologies we use, how are we, how are we connected with uh, Be Practical in this, uh, you know, the whole, uh, exercise, we just want to uh, give you a very brief about it. Okay, so coming to my introduction, so I'm Shwati here. I have about overall 14 plus years of experience in end-to-end -end HR activities. And in NetServe, I have about eight plus years of experience. So, which was a you know, wonderful experience with NetServe and you know, it's just go, going on and it just goes on for us. So, um, if you talk about NetServe, we have to tell about NetServe. NetServe is a product engineering organization, wherein we are there in this industry for more than a decade. And we are extremely successful. And, you know, we as an organization, um, you know, we work, uh, you know, uh, we are not and we don't have about thousands of people in our organization. We are we have very a few about 150 members is what this is what we want. We are not looking at an expan exponential growth as such. We are looking at in a very systematic way. This is how our growth want we want it. That's where we are growing. So we are very happy with the growth. Whatever we are seeing from past 20 years, it's like amazing journey what we have, and the kind of customers which we are getting across, you know, is like awesome for us. So if I have to talk to you on what kind of customers which we have, here uh, we have a huge customer base wherein they are across US, across UK, and we do have Indian customers. And we do have an, uh, customers with the Middle East and slowly we are penetrating our uh, uh, things to Australian market as well. So our focus is always on building products. As I, we said, we are a product engineering organization. Our focus is always to, uh, uh, always been on building products from the scratch. That's what we have been expertise on. And as I said, we are a technology, a technology and domain agnostic organization. Uh, if I say in terms of domain, we are uh, across healthcare, we are across uh, insurance, uh, we are uh, in retail, we are in uh, you know job servicing, uh, you know whatnot. We are across uh, all the domains which we have. So coming to the presentation, which um, Sumit has here, as I said here, now whatever I've discussed here, you have every point here. We are a software engineering organization and IT services company. And the main office is in Bangalore. I mean, we have a couple of offices, which is one in Bangalore, which is a development center. And we have a couple of offices in US, one is in Atlanta and one is in Denver. 
and we are in this business for about a decade long customer relationship and we are again in ISO 27001 and 2014 certified organization. So uh, about us, which I can proudly say, like if you can see the pointers here, I am talking about open culture, no hire and fire, performance oriented, career growth, job security, retention. So can anybody in this group can tell me what do you mean by open culture? I just want to have this session to be an interactive. That's why anybody can, you know, open up your mic and then you can just talk. What do you mean by open culture? What is that you understood by an open culture? Mm. This is Santosh here. Yes, Santosh. I feel my open culture, maybe people uh, are giving you freedom for an employee to express himself, his ideas, uh, his thoughts, and what okay. pos possible outcome, whatever it is, with regards to product or uh, whatever the uh, things. Exactly. exactly. You're exactly right, Jim. See, what we are looking at as open culture is not only giving the freedom for the employees, at the same time, we don't have any hierarchy in our organization. It means you might have a designation in place that I'm a HR manager, I will have somebody under me, we have software developers. That is not a hierarchy, that is a designation. So when we call it as an open culture, it doesn't mean that you have to follow the hierarchy because you have your lead it doesn't mean that you have to only talk to your lead you cannot talk to anybody no all doors are open you can talk to anybody in the company irrespective of the levels that's what i mean to have i mean to check as an open culture that is you can if you have any doubts you can talk to vp engineer you can talk to some heads you can talk to project managers you can talk to leads anybody you know, we're a highly transparent organization where, uh, you know, we don't, we are like very transparent. If this is, this is what it is, this is what it is. That's where we are. So that's where uh, one of the biggest um, uh, positive or advantage, which I would call as like, this is where we are, right? And the second point, what I would like to call upon is like, we believe in employees and customer satisfaction. This is our the first and foremost funda that is like you know for us how much ever is the customer satisfaction it's equal to employee satisfaction so if i say without employees i cannot work employee should be happy at the same time i want my customers i want my customers. i'm sorry for it i think uh, i would request everybody to be on mute thank you so much so we emphasize and we believe in customer satisfaction and we at the same time we are we are highly employee centric organization so we respect you know we respect we take as santosh has already said very clearly we take suggestions irrespective of number of years of experience i don't mind if somebody who is a fresher and gives me an a solution for a problem, we would love to take it. That is because for me, it doesn't matter whether a person has 20 years of experience, whether a person has zero years of experience, whether he has 10 years of experience. For me, I have to solve the problem in a, you know, in an amicable way, right? In that sense, I don't mind if somebody who gives a solution for that particular problem irrespective of the experience. And that's where we are. We don't look into it as an experience as the major thing. As somebody who has 10 years of experience may not be so good for me, but as somebody with zero one year of experience may be wow for me with an equal level of experience of 10 years. That depends, right? But at the same time, we respect that experience. It doesn't mean that we don't even respect. Yes, we respect the experience, we don't we don't have criteria only with experience that's what i mean to say so we believe with whatever skills knowledge whatever you have that's where we believe on and that's where we are that's where we are here as an organization over past 20 years and the second point if i say no higher and fire 
Can anybody tell what is that no higher in five? Hello. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Swati, we can hear you. Yeah, right. So can anybody tell me no higher and fire? What does that mean? I could see about some 50 plus in this group, 56 in this group. At least one can pick up and say that. nothing, no wrong answers or right answers. I just want to be a, have an interactive session. Hence, I'm asking you the question. No, that's okay. Fine. So what I mean to say is no higher and fire. You would see, in, uh, you know, I'm not comparing with any other organization, but as an organization of NITSEL is what I'm saying. We don't just take people and then we, because of these things, we don't fire them. It's like we are not an organization who is like hire and fire. Yes. If somebody's, if somebody's performance is not well, even then we give them a chance for them to succeed. After that as well, we take a decision, unanimous decision. But we are not an organization who take just for namesake, we take the numbers and then because we don't want to be fired. We are not an organization like that. We are, we will be looking at very clearly what is that we want. We are very clear in our thoughts. If I want only two people, I'll take only two. I will not offer for 10, 15 people and then, you know, remaining and all, I'll, because I want to show some numbers and then again, after that, I'll fire it. No, we are not used to it and we will not be doing henceforth in our future. We are not an organization of such kind. And the third thing which I was talking to you was on uh, career growth. Yes. So if you have to talk to me, if I have to talk to you on the career growth, yes. If you see like, you know, people who are talking to you like Swati, Sumit, we, if you see our examples, that is where our career growth stands. We started our careers here as a freshers, right? Maybe with one or one year of experience or two years of experience is what we would have started our career in itself. But over a period of nine years, 10 years, 11 years, 15 years, we have grown in such a big way where, you know, we are able to talk to you guys. You know, that itself is a big opportunity for us to showcase to you all that we are a career-oriented organization. The only one funda which we all have to uh, uh, think about is wherever you go is you have to grab an opportunity whenever it is. If an opportunity has been given to you, just grab it and move on. Um, We're an organization, as I said, no hire and fire. We're all there in this organization for nine years, 10 years, 15 years. So job security is a very generic word. If we perform well, I don't think so. We should be having that fear of job security. Right, so we are, as I said, like we are not an organization just taking people and then just we are firing you. That itself shows that we are in, you know, our, our jobs are secured, right? And if we are there, this organization for 10, 15 years, that itself showcases that, you know, we are in this organization and the job security is wow for us, right? So uh, coming to our uh, uh, connect with Be Practical. See, we were like, as an organization, we do have certain budgeting, we do have certain uh, 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 positions open on every year, every quarter which we work on. And like this, even this quarter, we had some things which we wanted to start up with and trained freshers of MERN or mean stack is what which we were looking at. That's where we got connected to Prema. And we were telling to Prema about our organization. In fact, we also got to know about Be Practical. And we thought, you know, Be Practical is the institute where, you know, whatever we are looking as a uh, whole package, we thought we have the same uh, uh, kind of curriculum where Be Practical also had it. So we thought it would be a good, you know, partnership with, to have with Be Practical and uh, you know to start up with our uh, journeys together hence we had a huge round of discussions back and forth and then 
we told them like our plan that we want about you know 10 15 people over a period of time then uh, to be very nice prema is very nice and then she has given us an opportunity to you know uh, uh, to interview a lot of she has scheduled a lot of people interviews and it was like very helpful for us to uh, you know break down and see where they are good and where they are bad and in fact we also given them the feedback saying that hey you are doing a good job in these things we want some improvement areas so that you know our curriculum will be stronger in the future days so that's where we we both as a partnership we are working together and in fact we had our a, a, a team of people who have joined next uh, we have a team of uh, people who have joined next uh, and then we have started the training and things are going on so uh, our plan on uh, for the next quarter i mean i would say for uh, maybe from jan to march you know every quarter we will look into it somewhere around five, five to 10 trained freshers if i say freshers it is not just a freshers mm -hmm. somebody who who got trained from pre practical or any, any other things right so we are looking for trained freshers the advantage of train, taking the trained freshers is not required that we have to start our training curriculum from the scratch because pre practical would have given you huge amount of training over a period of six months. In that sense, we will just brush up your knowledge and then we will give you a real time projects experience of, with our company. That's where we move on. That's where we are looking at a trained freshers, which helps both the parties for the B practical as well as for NetServe that we don't need to spend too much of uh, effort in training the candidates. So that's the model which we are working with the practical. It's working out fine. This is the first batch which we have started and many more to go in future. So yeah, so this is what we are looking at, you know, futuristic openings and a lot more, uh, um, you know, interviews to schedule in future. And we are, uh, you know, uh, collectively working together to uh, uh, do things, right? So uh, this is what I would, like to brief about you guys to understand what is that we are looking at and you know and one more point which i was looking at like eligibility see we are not an organization who look eligibility as an education perspective education is important we look for a basic degree it can be your btech bsc or anything is fine but we look at an, a basic degree is mandatory but we are not an organization who emphasizes on having an BTEC or any MCA, MBA, whatever you call. We are not an organization to give an emphasis on that. But if you have, that's well and good. But basic degree is mandatory. That's what we look into it. Because for us, as I always, always I used to tell this is, we look at the skill, knowledge, and experience as well. But skill and knowledge, if you have, it doesn't matter for me whether you are an uh, B student or MCA student. Uh, for me, it's both are same, right? So this is what I would like to conclude and you know put it across the summit. Between this, I'll give you a minute for you guys to uh, ask me any questions if you have. Hi, ma'am. Uh, this is Ram speaking. Hey, Ram. Uh, yeah, actually, I am uh, 2018 uh, passed out, mm -hmm. uh, having three plus years of. Uh, uh, gap uh, in my career so is this the right time so uh, to pick up here to enter the it field so doesn't how matter can... doesn't matter gap doesn't uh, gap doesn't matter and unless you have to pick up the new technologies whatever is now on the booming side whether you take your mern whether you take your whatever skin you're picking it up it all that you have to put an extra effort because you are lagging behind three years back because you have a gap the only thing is you have to put an extra effort to come to that level of, you know, the gap you have to fill. Whatever the latest technologies which you have got over a period of three years, that is where you have to start working. So for me, gap doesn't matter. Under unless you're keen in building your career, that's what. You need to have your self-motivation, self-interest, and self-learning is very important. Whatever we teach you in uh, training institutes, that's well and good. But how much you practice, it does matter, right?
you have to practice a lot here. Um, so should i start as a fresher now or i can keep a one or two years experience and i can uh, gain an experienced uh, job no you have to start as a fresher you are asking the, this question to a hr so i will not encourage to keep an experience of one or two experience and then do it i would uh, rather say you have to it doesn't help you right nor it, it does help company if because you have to have a gap of 3 years whatever the company is looking at obviously you will not have the uh, you know right skill to adapt instead you can tell to, to the company transparently saying that we have a gap because of these reasons hence i would like to restart my career that's a way of approach i would take it right so but if somebody who is giving taking an experience of one or two years and then going that doesn't help the company as well as for an individual okay okay thank you thank you uh, from my yeah. i have one question yes so, correct uh, we have like a, like uh, every two months uh, we will have like uh, 20 to 30 students so i would i would like to know like per month how many openings will be there see as i said uh, you know the openings uh, as of now uh, we were looking at you know 5 to 10 range as a quarterly basis is what we are looking at but it also uh, changes depending upon my customer needs and uh, you know new projects coming into picture right uh, for now the projection whatever i have is this maybe uh, in next year I, we might have a new customer who, can, who would be wanting more in that sense my the number of positions will obviously will go up so whatever number which we are giving you is a minimalistic number it can go up depending upon the uh, customers and the new projects coming into picture. Uh, thank you, Swati. Thank you so much, guys. I will hand over to Sumit. So, Sumit will uh, take care. Swati, there is one more question in chat box. Uh, yeah, tell me. In chat box, there is one more uh, query. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you be able to see? Same problem for me. I have completed my degree 2000 level, almost 11 years. Is it okay to start my career in IT field? Again, so whatever number of years of experience, that is, I mean, number of years of gap you have, I understand it might be for any number of reasons. That doesn't matter. But you will have to come to a pace because you're 11 years back, right? Now, over a period of 11 years, you would have got a lot of new technologies and people would be racing for that, right? So you have to give that time for you to race along with the candidates who are there at this level. So if you have the confidence that you can, you can, you can also run along with them, then why not? Doesn't matter. See, uh, the 11 years of gap, you need to have a genuine reason for it. What is it? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you will be having some genuine reason for it. So you will have to explain to any company for that matter, why is that 11 years and why do you want to restart your career? See, because normally what happens if somebody says like I have 11 years, then really people may not be really interested. But in such a way, you have to tell them that you are interested to restart your career and what is the reason for you and what are the things which you have learned over a period of 11 years. That is very important, right? So I have a gap is a different story. In the period of gap of 11 years, how did you improve your skills? If you have zero knowledge of what you have done and then you have to restart your career, then I don't know. You have to put 500% of your effort to come to this level. At least over a period of 11 years, yes, you are not working, but you have some, uh, you know, you are keeping in touch with the technologies, then it doesn't take you much time for you to come to the race where this generation kids are, right? So I think it's all about in your mind where uh, what you have to do and you have to be so strong and uh, learning. Again, self-learning is very important. You can restart. Nothing wrong in restarting your career after even after 11 years, 15 years, 20 years. That doesn't matter. It's all about will you be able to do it? Do you have the confidence? Can you spare the time? What is required? That is what is important. If you are confident in this, please, please restart your career. My suggestion is yes, you can. You have to. 
Uh, so, ma'am, here, uh, Ram here. Uh, yes, one more uh, Once we complete the course, uh, maybe after four months in around April month, mm -hmm. is there any specific uh, period of time uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, we will be uh, given opportunity to attend the interviews? Any specific period is there or until I get placed, uh, I will be given the opportunity? No. Uh, so you're talking about NETSEV or you're talking about generic? Uh, not, not a generic. In my case, uh, I'm talking about, suppose if I complete mm -hmm. the course by uh, end of March or April, so till when mm -hmm. uh, we having the opportunity to attend the uh, interviews from your company side? Okay. See, that's what, see, uh, we have one batch which we have started now. And we are looking at another batch, maybe that's what I said, no, maybe in Jan to March uh, a, a time, we are looking at another batch. So it depends See, a couple of things which involves here. It's it's not about uh, we taking, right? Uh, it's about our uh, projects getting uh, kick off and the customer base, all these matters for us, right? So when the customer is demanding for a uh, resource, then it's where I will look into it. I will talk to the training institutes like Be Practical, and then I'll tell them like, hey, I have you know uh, a requirement for the skill, and wherein I would I'm looking at uh, so many resources for this particular time. So that's where we start working on. So I cannot give you a very specific uh, date or month in time that you know we would be taking in April. We will be taking in March. So that doesn't work for us. Being an organization, um, we do have a uh, uh, plan in place, but all depends upon our customer uh, demand versus supply also matters for us. So hence, as soon as our, our plan for now is, as I said, we are looking at um, uh, quarterly, at least uh, five to 10 people is what which we are looking at. So uh, post which, if it can be increased depending upon the customer needs. But whenever we get an opening, straight away we will be connecting to the uh, be practical. We will talk to them and tell them like, hey, this is what we have. And uh, anyway, we have started our uh, journeys together. So uh, we will be in constant touch with Prema and then give her updates on what's happening on our end. And when do we want all these things, we will be uh, checking with them. Technical experience count in IT after getting technical training. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Any company, any company, if you join, it should be a win-win situation, right? So, however, I'm I'm getting you into the company. Uh, I will look into it. What is the value addition that person gives it to me, right? So, if somebody is in an non-IT and then coming to an FT, which we appreciate which we really want to appreciate. We appreciate the effort, what they would have put. But we would be looking at an overall experience. But when it comes to IT, we will look into the relevant experience. You have two segments which is working out, right? You have an overall experience, you have a relevant experience. I can have an overall experience of 20 years, but relevant experience is my HR. My relevant experience can be only nine years. So when I'm moving to other company, they will look into my relevant experience, not my overall experience. They respect my overall experience. Obviously, we have to respect. I respect your experience. But when it comes to business, they look into the relevant experience. It doesn't mean that whatever you worked in non-IT is going for a waste. No. You would have learned a lot of things. Whether you can use anywhere. It doesn't go for a waste. But when you go, when you're going for that particular field, when you're choosing your careers in technical or non-technical, that relevant experience matters. Thank you, Swar. The BP practical might have tied up with few organizations, like a startup organizations, where you will uh, provide some opportunities for us, right? Mm -hmm. So the maximum, what type of, uh, I mean, uh, what is the packages I can expect? The okay. minimum or the maximum on a given course, like a full stack developing. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So uh, Ram, you have asked me two questions. The first question you have asked, like, what are the uh, companies B Practical is tied up with? I think Prema is the right person to uh, uh, to give you the answer for it. The yes. second question, what you've asked is the salary range. Yeah. 
if you ask me as a salary range i will i will not look at the salary range at this point the reason behind it is how do i fix a salary range i cannot fix up the salary range just because of the experience i have to look at the salary range when i see a person on the interview right if i see a person in the interview then i'll get to know whatever experience he is saying whether he is matching to that experience or not that's where i can say if let's say ram has you know 3 years of gap and then he's trained in be practical and then he's coming it means for me ram is a fresher right in spite of i mean he might have different experiences for me ram uh, if he doesn't have any it experiences before for me ram is a fresher right so each organization will have their own salary structure in place like right some organization will start with 3 lakh some organization can start with 5 lakh some organization can even start with 10 lakhs that depends upon the person to person it means let's say some we get it from iits if we get from iits the salary range cannot be at 2 lakhs or 3 lakhs that no, the range will go little higher because they studied in such a way that you know we know that you know some value addition they would be getting so we have lot of parameters which we will have to look into it when we say as a salary per se so hence my suggestion to you all in this group is if you are starting your career please do not worry on the package i am not saying that package is not important package is very important to everybody at the same time whenever you are restarting your career or whenever you are you want to uh, you have a gap and then you want to start your career as a fresher please see the company where you can learn where you can learn automatically you gain an experience of one or two years you be strong in your basics the money will come to you later right so my my answer to you is if you talk to if you ask me as a net serve net serve has different wide ranges i have somebody who is a fresher where we could have given 6 lakhs or 7 lakhs as well that depends upon the person because i would have seen something extra with that person i would have also given somebody with 2.5 to 3 lakhs that depends upon the person so we do have a range where we can stabilize some for few people we can i can i will have the authority to give more for a number of reasons for some of them i will have an authority to say that this is the band which we are looking at so we want like this right so it it always differs from the market to market yes so, yes i do, yeah. do understand it depends on how we impress the correct it's not about impress impress is different knowledge is different impressing is like you just uh, you know you say that i know this i know this i know this i am like wow 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 no we look into the knowledge and skill that is important if i ask you a question i will get to know how is ram whether ram knows the subject or not whether ram is giving me the bookish knowledge whether ram is giving the actual practical knowledge where he has learned where he has done the project with our experience we can easily find it out what is ram's experience in this particular project right so if let's say ram is going for be practical and then doing some courses there and doing some projects there i can ask you some questions from my technical team my ask you some questions wherein they will get to know whether ram has really done this project whether ram if ram has done this project did he really understood what he has done why you have done and for what and you know all those things we can able to identify if you ask me a question how do you know that comes with the experience okay thank you sir yeah. yeah thank you okay so i think i'll move to uh, sumit sumit will be taking on the technical things so hope you all can hear me and uh, thanks swati for a session and i believe that's just clarified all your doubts and see kind of you know uh, uh discuss what was was required as agenda of this meeting so far so i just quickly to talk about in a couple of slides one is the uh domain area or uh you know uh functional area that normally we work on 
okay and then technical side of it so uh, as swati already talked about project product engineering okay <clears throat> so there's slight difference between a uh, project development than a project and product engineering so we develop product for our customer it is not that only customer says and we do we are not really doers we actually put ourselves in customer shoes we understand their business requirements we understand their customers business requirement and we give them valuable input saying what is that can be done best done done best in this project okay what one what should not be done that means we are all actually adding value to their product and their business so that gives a lot long term you know relationship and a lot of dependency from their end then you can see a lot of verticals that are put it here migration services you know we do a lot of data migration from one uh, a technology and a technology you know data migration migration of the platform all this stuff and then in a mobile development we do you know a hybrid and ios as well as android development okay <clears throat> and we do we develop apps for our customer and then we do it we work on the bi side of it hope you guys know about bi data warehousing data mart development you know kpi development uh predictive analysis all the stuff we normally work on either microsoft or non microsoft technologies like you know tableau click view all this stuff and then uh, we work on you know uh maintenance services we call sustenance service and then we are also working on testing testing basically the production or sorry the development happens somewhere in us or client place but we do a testing services for them automation and manual as well using different kind of you know uh, tools and technologies and also we work on devops and as well as cloud part of it so kind of a suit of all the domains and verticals that we work on and uh, you can see here the huge stack of technology okay you name it we have it here so uh, we work on you know uh, uh java framework mbc you know, wcf and wwf all the stuff okay and then you know html5 ali it is there angular and react all the stuff mern and stuff and then uh we also work on a lot of open source technologies you know uh, j2e java php ruby rr all the stuff mern min all the stuff and then uh, mobile as i already told you know we work on a hybrid and you know uh, native titanium phone gap xamarin all technologies and ios development database we work on all databases like mysql is sql server postgres oracle and you know mongo db you know the no sql db mongo db so all this thing you know other technologies we work on on uh, bi platform we work on microsoft bi ms bi ssis ssrs ssas tableau click view and power bi and then you know project management normally since we are a project organization we do a lot of project management tool uh, knowledge is things we have gitlab and jenkins jira and is version 1 all this stuff we work here testing uh, we you know and uh, we write a lot of text script as well using python and c sharp javascript all this stuff because we have to develop text script and for our testing purpose we use tools like you know testlink mantis bugzilla all this stuff cloud service azure and aws and google cloud services and uh, some amount of big data as well so you can see here is a complete suit of all the different flavor of technologies that we have been working for a long time so yeah as you guys working on react and you know angular and express we do work on them some of our project work on them you know different technologies uh as far as uh, domain concern you know uh, the primary domain that we have been working for not this is not the all we work on different domains okay uh, but this is a key domain that i am talking about here one is insurance and mortgage we have a large scale customer here and then retail and distribution we have you know a lot of customer on this field human resource hr you know development all this stuff healthcare also again and entertainment and attraction in this we have developed our own product our own ip and this product has been doing really well 
in India, US, you can few more countries. We have several customers are using this product. Okay, so this is the main domain that I have, you know that we have been working for a long, long time. Besides that, there are also small, small domains that have been working for in a small project, but is a predominantly you know used or worked upon domains that we have working. <coughs> so uh, this is all about the technology and the domains that you're working for. Coming back to you know that uh, uh, our involvement and engagement with you know be practical we have been doing the interviews i am involved a lot of interviews the feedback that i wanted to share to you know already share to the candidates that we you know we have interviewed so far and to you guys as well <clears throat> is that there could be a technology like react there could be something like you know angular.js node.js express net database everything okay so there is no end of it. Every day there's a new invention in technology comes in picture. What you need to focus and what we focus as um, uh, to be part of our organization is you should be strong in fundamentals. Okay. When the fundamentals should be very uh, you know, clear in its logic, logical. Then you, you know about the object orientation concept because these days React gets all to the, the latest version having you know oops concept in this. This will be very strong in oops concept. Okay, what is the class? What is the method? What is the property? How do you the object? And what is the polymorphism in inheritance abstraction? All these things should be very clear about it. Okay. So fundamentals, if you are clear, if you are strong, you can pick up any technology, any of this thing within a short amount of time. It's just a matter of how do you spend time and learn. That's it. But if you're weak in your fundamentals, if you're weak in your you know, uh, basics, what will happen is no amount of you know, uh, you know, input given to you or no amount of teaching given to you will not be able to scale up. So you'll be failing or struggling every point. So we have been asking very fundamental questions to our candidates, you know, logical questions, who concept from oops, and some question from you know, React as well. Now, definitely React is a primary thing here, React and other stuff. So, we have observed that many people are you know, struggling in the fundamentals, the concept, a part of it. Okay, so let's see if I ask you this question. If I give you a option of choosing React and you know Angular, which one will choose and why? What is the good thing in React you have seen over in Angular, or what is the you know bet, good thing you see in Angular? Which is better? Which is best? And why? So those fundamental questions, if you are not clear, then how do you really go about doing it? Okay. So this way, there are many, many questions that you should be knowing clearly before jumping into the, you know, dirting your hand into the, you know, technology. <clears throat> of course, you should be knowing, you know, as you are learning, as you're working in an environment like us or in an organization, if you're knowing technology every day, but at the same time, you should be very strong in fundamental. So if you, if you notice our uh, greatest, you know, cricket batsman from India, Sachin Tendulkar, he talks always, you know, whenever he struggles, Whenever he is in poor form, he used to be in poor form, he used to go back to his fundamentals. He always talk about it, go to fundamentals and see where you're doing mistakes. So I think this is very important that you first build your fundamentals, foundation of your entire you know, building, then build the building. But otherwise it will be shaky building. It may fall down anytime. Okay. So this is my, at a high level advice to you guys. So you know you can even, it advice to be particular as well. I request them to teach before even they jump into React and before even they jump into other technological things. They should be able to teach you about the fundamentals of computer programming, you know, uh, and asking the question why, why I have to use it, when I have to use it, and what purpose is that. So those questions have to be asked even before we jump into the coding and your technical stuff. Hope I am clear about my message and my you know, this thing. So any questions for anybody? Uh, yes, Sumit. Uh, thanks for your information. I consider your uh, things and I'll uh, put a word to our exports as well. Yes, uh, Sumit, there is one question in chat box. Yeah, just give me a second. How to consider full stack developer as compared to front end or back end developer individually? Whom do you prefer? Good, good question. Basically, uh, This is how normally we see it. Okay. 
a full stack developer being a lot of added value. It's a, if I need to develop a functionality where I need to develop a front end, you know, UI, and develop a back end, you know, our you know, uh, you know, programming logic there, you know, using your Node.js or any other technology. Okay. And also I need to do a little bit of back end, you know, in terms of database also, create a table, create a you know a view or whatever it is. Okay, table structure, all this stuff. So I do not really want to bring in three people there, one for front end, one for you know, one for you know middle tier, one for you know database. That means I am putting a lot of pressure on my HR, a lot of pressure on my team. I am bringing three people there. Okay. And you know, it will get a lot of overhead in the in, in the organization to the HR, to the infrastructure, to everybody, everybody here. So if we can bring in one person who has the flavor of all, the best thing will work out for everybody. Even if it is work for work out for you as well as the organization also, because that's when we work for full stack. That can bring a lot of value to the entire project in terms of you know their programming. Also, if you see a technical perspective, a person who is developing a front end. A person who is developing the middle tier and the back end, he has a complete understanding of the end-to-end -end part of it, and he can do a good job on that. But if you put a three persons there, they need to handshake each other, each other. Things will go, you know, here and there, and functionally, it will end up with a lot of issues and and, issues, and you know bugs. So that also consumes more time to make them understand the entire thing end-to-end. -end. So if I put one person there, it will it will easy to handle the situation here. Okay, that's what normally we prefer as a only full stack you know developer is actually a pain point perspective okay <clears throat> uh sometimes what happens is we get a front end guy we train them on full stack because only we do that okay we get a back end guy we train them on front end so we kind of you know cross training also that that, that front actually <clears throat> hope i have answered your question any other questions But at the same time, when it's a full stack, it may happen that we cannot, you know, tell a customer that we have a, you know, modern full stack. So give us a modern project. Customer will say, no, my front end is React, my back end is .NET. So now what will happen now? The, the person that we have here is modern, right? He has done Node.js. We cross train them. We them Whoever is willing to learn, we cross them. Then. But only thing is, you should you should be willing to learn. You should be open up because you should not be limiting yourself with one of the technology. You should be open to learn any technology so that you can at least you will be more sellable and you have more knowledge on the technical field. <clears throat> any other questions? Yes, Sumit. Sumit, I have some Swati. You have some US flying jet. So if our students place in your organization, is there any chance to fly to abroad? Abroad? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So basically how it works is uh, we have pre, you know, uh, COVID situation. We have many, you know, pre-lockdown. We, many of our employees and even in fact, you know, many of our uh, Past employees and present employees already settled in abroad. Okay, they have been working from abroad for last many years. Okay, we have been, you know, uh, people who are loyal to us, working on the organization for a long time. We have been giving them the opportunity to settle in abroad also. One is sending to abroad; they will work there for projects. For you know, they'll get a kit there, and they'll come back and implement it here. Also, they'll go there and work with the customer, you know, environment for some time and come back here. Okay. So that normally happens. It is not immediately, as as I said, people work here. They prove themselves. They prove themselves that they are loyal to the organization, and they can add value to the organization. And if you send them to abroad, they are going to justice to the customers and justice to the organizations also. Once that is done, we are all set. We can send them there. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, so much, and Swati for your valuable time. Uh, we will promise you from our end, you will have a good placement and uh, hope for all the students uh, will be there in your organization for another uh, a couple of months. Yeah, thank you, Prima, and thank you everyone for you know, joining the session. Hope you got understanding of the technology project domain and our culture and, you know, requirements.
so we'll, we'll talk to you soon later okay yes so all the best all the best thank you thank you thank you, thank you, thank you ma'am thank you, ma thank you.